much. Madam Minister, when we uh, speak of alliances, I think this idea of alliances is very important. Uh, after that, I'd like to come back to the two uh, super superpowers. But how do you, in your case, uh, choose your, uh, if your alliances? How, how, do you, how do you choose your, 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 your uh, partners? It's as simple as based on the objectives of the program that we're on. Um, and what the partner brings to the table and what we bring to the table. Um, a lot of our partnerships in terms of development have been based on mutual development of both of the entities. Uh, we work heavily in integrating our teams uh, within the teams of the entities that we work on. So it's always based on objectives. Yes, but this is, uh, if I may say, uh, a technical uh, answer. But, uh, of course, these issues are also fundamentally political. So this is why I repeat my question. Uh, if beyond uh, the uh, uh, economic, technological considerations, what are the, the political uh, aspects of the, of the major choices? So space at the moment, and as, as uh, um, was just mentioned earlier, access to space is very important and ensuring the sustainability of space is very important. And that's usually played in the global policy forums um, in terms of how are we ensuring that we are sustainably accessing space so we're not cluttering space and cluttering the ways that we're using in space. This is conversations that are happening across the board, across different uh, nations. And then the second one is how do you ensure that you have access to space for different nations that want to access for different reasons. You mentioned Earth observation. Earth observation is very important for all of us. It touches on every single person's uh, daily lives, whether we know it or not. Uh, and therefore ensuring that nations have access to space. And that doesn't mean access to launching to space, even access to data coming from space is what we use and what we discuss on a, an international front. So those are the different aspects that come to consideration when you're talking about international partnerships. On the policy front, it's very important. And this conversation over the course of the next 10 years will become more important. And new alliances, I think, will form based on the methodology that we think we should proceed with regards to access to space. So be before I enlarge the discussion, maybe you wanted to say something on, on this question? No? no, no, I just want to mention that we have, we, of course, we have a strong alliance between the two, the, the two governments uh, on, on space policy, you know, because we, are, we have a lot of uh, joint activities between the uh, Emirates and, uh, and, uh, and France. Uh, so we have uh, people from Toulouse coming back and forth to, to Thank you, Raj. So, before I enlarge the discussion to, with uh, the participants, uh, if, you, if we look uh, much ahead, you know, let's say the next 20 years or something like that, uh, well, I think nobody knows if uh, any human mission on Mars uh, can succeed because the, for, for human reasons, probably more than for technological reasons, of course, but we can dream. I don't know, Madam Minister, since you are very young, maybe you will be a candidate sometime to, 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 to visit Mars, and I hope you will come back um, in good physical conditions. <laughs> Uh, but, that's not uh, a given, huh? I mean, it's, uh, it's that's, a, that's, <laughs> the, that's the big question. Uh, and, uh, but uh, there is another uh, question, with more political and less romantic, about the, the, the long term, which is the following one. You know, the, uh, if the rivalry between the United States and, and China uh, develops over the next uh, 20 years, which is... Uh, uh, very uh, likely, of course, and, and, and beyond, there is at least a theoretical possibility of uh, two disconnected cyber spaces, uh, one which would be uh, American-dominated, the other one which would be uh, China-dominated. Uh, and uh, my question is, well, this is not true, but it is, it is a more... Uh, credible, uh, more likely uh, event than uh, the human mission in, in, in Mars in, in, in this uh, time span. So uh, my question is well, to, to the two of you. Uh, how, first, uh, uh, do you recognize the legitimacy of the, of the question? Point number one. Uh, it, 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 from a political but even from a technological view, viewpoint here, that is to have totally disconnected uh, cyber spheres. 
And uh, if uh, that uh, became uh, a reality, what consequences would it have on the rest of us? Uh, or to put it perhaps in a slightly different way, is there a place for a third, uh, for, for, for a third choice that is uh, not to be trapped? This is something that we have discussed in various ways in, in the last two days in different fields. But uh, would there be room for, uh, for, for others not to be forced to choose between, between the two? We start with you. So I'll, I'll take you back to the previous question that you yeah. asked. So your, your question, I think the reasoning that you've gone through is a legitimate um, source of uh, perhaps concern for many nations around the world. Looking at it from a access perspective, that's where we can have the third option becoming the normal. And you spoke about the UAE's relationship with uh, France, a lot of it is actually based on a common understanding of how to utilize space. If we continue such collaborations between different nations, and if you continue ensuring that new entrants that want to enter into the space uh, uh, domain are actually able to enter into it, are not prohibited by either very stringent technological requirements under the guise of sustainability of space or very stringent requirements in terms of, of sorry, inhibitions in terms of access to, exa for example, um, launch, cap launch site access or access to various orbits in space. If the conversation is kept within ensuring access to space, we will get the third option where you don't get, you, you will continue to get this fostered collaboration in space. The other aspect that's more, allowing this to be more reasonable is going back to the point of the entrance of the private sector. And your point is well, well, well noted where it is supported by government. The private sector today is supported by government either by demand creation or by providing subsidies or by providing contracts. But if you increase the demand for space from other sectors, you enable a portion of the space sector to grow and to be dependent business to business, and it no longer becomes a government to business relationship. That increases the number of actors that enter into the space sector. And by increasing the number of actors that enter the space sector, by default, you're going to increase business to business relationship, government to, to businesses in other, in other countries' relationships, and so on. You increase the number of players. You remove the dominance, and you make the name of the game in space, the norm of the name of the game in space, to be collaboration, cooperation, and healthy competition like what exists, what you described exists today in Europe. And that's how you're able to move towards the third option, which I think is the beneficial option to all players um, on the ground today. Well, thank you very much for this elaborate uh, answer, Philippe. Yeah, perhaps to, to answer your question on uh, is there a risk that uh, you have on one side a, a US-led uh, cyberspace environment and uh, another one on the, on the Chinese side. Yes, yes, there is a risk. And I think it's very important, at least for Europe, to be there. Uh, it, it's crucial for our autonomy. It's crucial for business. Uh, and, and, we, and we really need to develop at least, uh, uh, I'm thinking of the uh, telecommunication constellation uh, of satellites. Uh, in low Earth orbit. This is very important because this is a component which is key for the future of telecommunication. It will be a simple way to provide internet everywhere on the globe uh, with a very uh, with real time, so very short delay of uh, response. And, and, and this, uh, this project is really, I think, a, a cornerstone of the European policy in space. Uh, this is something which is really pushed by the European Commission, and, and it, it, it's, uh, it's really key. And I believe it will really happen. It will happen because this constellation, so of course there is the constellation of uh, Elon Musk, Starlink, which is already there, but there is also OneWeb, uh, which is a uh, European and a UK-based UK uh, constellation. 
but uh, and also other players. And I am pretty sure that you will have very soon a big European constellation for internet. This is, this is really fun. Well, thank you very much.